What's up guys, Rogue9 here and today I've got a slightly different Battlefield 1 video for you. I had a go at the new night map Prise de Tailleur on the Battlefield 1 CTE yesterday and I thought I might as well put together some thoughts on the map. As you can see it's a very symmetrical map with the Germans spawning behind point A on the left and the French spawning behind point E on the right. Running in a line along the middle we have the capture points B, C and D. But let's look at those later. First let's look at the German home point. The area in between the German spawn and flag A is this edge of the city that has been completely obliterated by shell fire. And what I particularly like is having sort of the ancient medieval walls or ruins of those walls of the city which have then been supplemented by the modern trenches overlooking this valley. It's a great defensive area and it makes complete and utter sense why it would be shelled to rubble. It's a very defensible area and any attacking force coming into the city would try to destroy these defenses as much as possible. The flag point A is very interesting as well. It's a three-storied building and built inside of the ruins of adjacent buildings we have this small trench network. So it's quite a small capture area as in fact most of the capture areas on this map are but because of the structures there it also means that there's a lot of places to take cover. But there is an issue I see with this. I mean this is the home point for the German team but because of all of these ruins in the surrounding area it's actually very difficult to keep hold of this point if you're playing on the German team. All it takes is one French guy hiding in any one of these ruins and as soon as you think your home point is safe and you move forward into the rest of the city they can just go straight back in and take over an uncontested flag. So this is something that is definitely unique and unusual for Battlefield 1 that the flag that is closest to your spawn point can actually be surrounded and you're in danger from being attacked from what you think normally is your safe area. And more than once when I was playing on the German side was I taking back flag A only only to be shot in the back by a Frenchman who was not actually in the capture zone but just somewhere in the ruins in the back waiting to pick off German players rushing in. And a lot of the combat on this map was infantry focused. I mean each side only gets one tank and one armoured car. There are no gun emplacements at all and no aircraft. So if we move from point A towards point C of the map you can see you come through this area of narrow alleyways that is once again dominated by ruined buildings and that makes for some intense close quarters combat. Some of the buildings in this area are accessible, these ones straight ahead right now, and they actually overlook point C. And point C is literally pure craziness. The capture area is very, very small. It's only this small circular area around the monument. The only cover you have is from the monument itself and a few makeshift semi-finished trenches. The area can be overlooked from at least three different accessible blocks of buildings. There's the block I mentioned in the beginning and then the one to the left here and straight ahead. And to top it all off, this area can be accessed from roads and alleyways from literally every direction. Urban combat is really dangerous and messy and you'll feel that on the entire map, but nowhere is this more true than around point C. This feature of the map is of course further exacerbated by the fact that it is a night map and not being able to see your enemy clearly makes this even more of a mess. In the current orientation of the map, flag B is in the north and it is a little bit calmer. You have this marketplace which is surrounded by a destructible wall and at least in the beginning of the game all of these covered areas are also stacked with boxes and all sorts of soft cover. As you can see though that changes as the match progresses and it becomes distinctly more challenging to find cover later on in the game. Especially when you're trying to hide from the enemy tank since this area is quite quite easily accessible by vehicles. Now moving from point E or C to the French home flag E takes you through an area that is quite different from the mirrored area between A and C. As I showed you earlier, the area between A and C is a complete warren of destroyed buildings. Between E and C, by contrast, you have an area that is actually quite intact, quite open. Firefights in this area tended to be at much greater distance than on the flip side of the map. 
And in the few games I played, I found myself getting bogged down here far less than on the other side. You can enter some of the buildings in this area, but uh, they are dead ends, so you can jump in there and lurk while waiting for players to try and make their way through and shooting them in the back. But other than that, I wouldn't expect a lot of fighting to be taking place in those buildings. As we move across to flag E now, you can see that the contrast to the other side of the map becomes even more stark. The flag itself is in a walled courtyard that has six adjacent buildings that you can enter. So a lot of the combat around this flag will probably be within the buildings, with people running in and then going to a top floor, and then being able to hold out there while players from the other team have to fight their way up. Limpet charges or dynamite might be a great option if you're going to be fighting in this area. A potential issue with this area that might imbalance the map slightly is the area surrounding the flag and especially the area in between the flag and the French spawn point. As you can see here, surrounding the courtyard is a relatively open park area. And apart from a few small buildings around the edge of the park, there are relatively few hiding spots, especially when you compare it with the destroyed area around Flag A. My concern with that would be that taking and holding Flag E is much easier than it is on the other side of the map especially for the French team who can spawn right here behind this row of buildings should it be required. And in addition to that, the openness of the area makes it quite dangerous because it is easily accessible to the French tank that spawns right here. For the French to clear out their home point, to me at least, seems much easier at this stage than it would be for the Germans. Even if the German team arrives in overwhelming force, takes back their home point, all it takes is one French guy to hide anywhere in any of these ruins he spawns in two or three of his buddies and as soon as you move on they can just come in from the back and take that point away from you again and there's nothing that will disadvantage a team like having to constantly go back and defend and retake your home point while the majority of the enemy team can focus on the center of the map Speaking of center of the map, let's look at the area around point D. In between point C and point D, you have several staircases and balconies introducing a significant amount of verticality into the gameplay. Not only do you have to be aware of enemies that could come around any corner at any time, but they could even be above you, or of course below you for that matter, again making it quite risky to move through this area, especially if you're in a small group or even on your own. Point D is the tram station which features a small island around the flag surrounded by a makeshift trench. Similarly to the trench around point C, this is great for taking cover in but it's really bad for actually taking up a defensive position. It doesn't really offer you a great view of most of the approaches because once you're in the trench you can't actually see over the top of it properly. So very similarly to point C, the combat here ends up being very very close range. All in all, at the moment at least, it's quite a dark area with some of the lighting actually provided by a vehicle. A vehicle that seems to be transporting hay in the middle of a city. Because why not? Actually, the city is surrounded by a lot of farmland and that ties in with the actual village of Tahir that was destroyed, completely and utterly destroyed during the First World War. But in contrast to this significant city we see in the game, Tahir was actually only a village of about 185 people. But we already have small villages on almost every map in the game to date, so having a proper city is definitely a nice change of pace. And yes, of course, we already have Amiens, but even though the buildings are very similar, Amiens feels much more open. There are very long sight lines in Amiens down almost every road and in this city here by contrast, you have far more alleyways and destroyed buildings and trenches. So a lot of the combat ends up far more frantic, far more close range than in any other map I've seen before. And that brings me to a point that kind of frustrated me a little bit, at least in this very early stage of the development of the map. The urban combat on this map automatically gives a distinct advantage to the assault class and especially the hipfire run and gun weapons that the assault class has, the Automatico and the Model 10A. I personally am not a massive fan of these weapons. It feels kind of cheap to get a hipfire kill at close range with an Automatico and it feels even cheaper, at least to me, to be killed by one of them. And the fact that this is a night map, I feel, at least at this early stage, gives these weapons even more of an advantage. With the way that the lighting 
currently is, if you're aiming down sights and firing any of the guns, the muzzle flash and smoke of your gun is so blinding that you will lose sight of an enemy even at 2 or 3 meters distance. It was quite frustrating to sneak up on an enemy from behind, start shooting him and after the very first shot immediately go completely blind only for him to turn around and hip fire me to death with his automatico. I've seen other YouTubers like a level cap mention that he had exactly the same problem and actually upped his brightness to be able to see the enemy better. And of course people changing their settings to get an advantage isn't a great solution and I'm sure that the lighting will be changed before the map is released. And one final comment maybe, especially on the lighting, is that it makes this map, at least in its current stage, quite graphics card intensive. With my new PC I've never had any issues running any of the maps in this game, but here as you can see right now, the game would now and then give me a frame rate warning. Again this is something that I fully expect to be addressed in the coming weeks before the release of the map, because it would be a real shame for players to have to turn down their graphics settings simply because the new map map is more intense. So there are my thoughts on this new map. It looks beautiful, it offers a very different experience to anything we've seen in Battlefield 1 to date and if close quarters frantic combat is your thing then you may well have a really good time playing this map. As always guys, I'd be more than happy to hear your comments on the map and on the thoughts that I've shared. You know the drill, comments go below the video. For Battlefield 1 videos only, I also accept carrier pigeons if that is your preferred method of communication. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next episode.